Hello and welcome to the HistoryNetwork.org podcast. We really do love getting your ideas for scripts, so why not share some of your knowledge with other listeners too and write a script? There's no need to feel daunted by it because we can give you a hand and help get the script done. So why not give it a go or drop us a line at info at thehistorynetwork.org and chat to us about your idea. You can always like our Facebook page as well to follow what we do and make sure you don't miss anything. The History Network dot org podcast season twenty three episode four Operation Frankton The Cockle Shell Heroes Operation Frankton, which took place from the seventh to the twelfth of december nineteen forty two, had the intention of sending a handful of Royal Marines paddling 70 miles up River Gironde during the hours of darkness with the goal of laying limpet mines on enemy shipping to disrupt German operations out of the port of Bordeaux. The port of Bordeaux in the west of France was important to the German war effort as many merchant ships used it to supply the German army stationed not only in France but also throughout occupied Europe. German U-boats also used the port as a base, and any disruption to their Atlantic patrols would be highly important to the Allies. The Allies were pretty capable at dealing with any German merchant ships that came through the English Channel. These could be dealt with by either the Royal Navy or by Coastal Command. A problem for the Allies, though, was that plenty of merchant ships were using routes via the Mediterranean Sea to reach Bordeaux Harbour, and there was little the Royal Navy could do about that. Several ideas were mooted for dealing with this problem of merchant shipping getting through to Bordeaux, including bombing raids, but that was ruled out due to the civilian casualties which would likely result. Back in the spring of 1941, a Captain H. G. Hasler, R.M., known as Blondie, had promoted the idea of using canoes to penetrate heavily defended enemy harbours, following his pre-war experience of small boats and a period of service with the Mobile Naval Base Defence Organisation, the MNBDO, on Hailing Island. However, the Admiralty regarded the idea as impracticable at the time. However, when, later in 1941, the Italians successfully penetrated Alexandria Harbour in Egypt using so-called human torpedoes, and the fact they were able to inflict serious damage on the battleships Elizabeth and Valiant, Churchill was keen for similar results, and Hasler was now in the ascendancy and posted to the Combined Operations Development Centre to develop his earlier ideas. Hasler set up his operation in South Sea on the Solent on the central southern coast of the UK. He recruited officers from the Royal Marine Small Arms School at Gosforth and other ranks from the Royal Marine Auxiliary Battalion at Portsmouth. He used the lightweight SBS Folbot as inspiration for his designs and eventually came up with a more robust specification called a cockle hence the nickname given to the mission's men. These cockles were capable of carrying heavier loads, and they were collapsible, unlike the kit form of the Folbot which required assembly. For security purposes, these and similar craft were designated boom patrol boats. Hasler developed the idea of using these boats and canoes together in future raids, the former to find paths through surface obstacles and the latter to press home the attack. Mountbatten agreed to this approach, and so the deceptively named Royal Marine Boom Patrol Detachment, or RMBPD, was formed. Patrols of the defensive boom outside Portsmouth Harbour were regularly carried out to hold up the pretense that these boats were merely for patrolling booms. With the boats now designed, a mission plan was needed. Six cockles, each crewed by two Royal Marines with sufficient supplies and limpet mines for an operation lasting several days, were to be dropped by submarine off the mouth of the river Gironde. The crews would paddle by night and lay up during the day to reduce the risk of detection. 
In Bordeaux Harbour, they would attach limpet mines to the merchant ships, withdraw, scuttle their canoes and make their way overland to Spain. It was also decided to split the force into two divisions. In Division A were the boats Catfish, with Hasler and Marine Sparks, Crayfish, Corporal Laver and Marine Mills, and Conga, Corporal Sheard and Marine Moffat, while Division B had the Cockles Cuttlefish, Lieutenant McKinnon and Marine Conway, Coalfish, Sergeant Wallace and Marine Ewart, and Cachalot, Marines Ellery and Fisher. The submarine dropping them off would be HMS Tuna. Tuna had originally been ordered from Scott's Shipbuilding and Engineering Company on the 9th of December 1937 as part of an extension of the 1937 construction programme. She was equipped with diesel engines produced by Mann SE, a German company. As the engines had been delivered before the war, this now made spare parts something of a problem, and the crew had been creative at times in replacing parts from other equipment while at sea. Tuna had quite a busy war up to the point she was involved in Operation Franklin. She sank the 7,230-ton merchantman Tirana, a German-captured Norwegian vessel, on the 22nd of September 1940. She also torpedoed and sank the German catapult ship Ostmark and the French tug Chasseron. She fired upon and sank the German submarine U-644 and attacked a German submarine U-302 and the Italian submarine Brin, as well as two unidentified submarine contacts, all unsuccessfully. An attack also failed on the German tanker Benno, formerly the Norwegian Ole Jakob, which had also been captured earlier by the Atlantis. In January of 1941, Tuna was involved in some cat-and-mouse U-boat action near the Isles of Scilly, and in February 42, the boat was ordered towards the Trondheim area along with HMS Trident to protect a convoy from enemy sorties from Swedish ports. However, Tuna's more infamous war effort occurred on the 30th of November 1942. Under the command of Lieutenant R. P. Rakes, Tuna sailed from Holy Loch, Scotland, taking the two divisions of Royal Marines to the Gironde Estuary for Operation Frankton. She was due to arrive at the estuary on the 6th of December, but was delayed due to bad weather and the presence of a minefield. She arrived at the estuary a day late, surfacing 10 miles, or 16 kilometres, from the mouth of the river. They disembarked from HMS Tuna at 2000 on December the 7th. Cachalot damaged her hull when being passed through the submarine's hatch and played no part in the raid. Coalfish succumbed to a very strong riptide. Coalfish and her crew of two were no match for the five-feet waves. Conga then capsized at the mouth of the Gironde. Although Hasler managed to tow her for some time, he eventually advised her crew to make for the shore. After circumventing four anchored chasseur-type boats, the formation became more widely dispersed than planned, and Cuttlefish was now found to be missing. They pressed on until 06.30 the next morning, and then took cover in low scrub. They had covered 23 nautical miles, but now the mission's force was just reduced to two canoes and four men. The second night's paddling on December 8th and 9th was uneventful, but they had to start thinking ahead to the logistics of how they would actually carry out the placing of the mines and use the tides to their advantage. For example, the following night there were three hours of flood tide and six hours of ebb tide, followed by another three hours of flood tide. Clearly progress against the ebb tide would be impossible. After a good night's rest on the 10th, 11th of December, the men spent the day preparing their limpets and equipment for the attack. Hasler decided that catfish would cover the west side of the docks and crayfish the east. On the fifth night, the 11th and 12th December, both canoes entered the harbour basin without difficulty. Catfish placed eight limpets on four vessels, including the fast patrol boat Spurbrecher. Crayfish also placed eight limpets on two vessels, five on a large cargo ship and three on a small liner. 
A sentry on the deck of the Spurbrecher spotted catfish as it turned to make its escape downstream. He shone his torch down, but the camouflage proved effective, and he took no action. He perhaps thought the shapes he could see to be merely driftwood. The men had practised lying perfectly still in such circumstances. Each mine had a nine-hour fuse on it that was activated before the mine was placed, giving the four marines time to get away. Both crayfish and catfish escaped on the tide. The damage to Bordeaux Harbour was severe. Now the crews had to leave their canoes, move on foot and link up with the French resistance at the town of Ruffec. The Germans automatically assumed that the men would travel south to Spain. In fact, they travelled a hundred miles north of Bordeaux, a journey that took six days. They then backtracked and travelled to Gibraltar via Spain. Back in the UK, a German high command communique was intercepted on the 10th of December, which announced that a sabotage squad had been caught near the mouth of the Gironde and eliminated. Word of the damage caused to shipping in Bordeaux filtered through. Mysterious explosions had damaged five ships. In the absence of information to the contrary, all ten men were posted missing, presumed dead. Lever and Mills, who were moving separately from Sparks and Hasler, were caught by the Germans and shot. With the help of the French resistance, Hasler and Sparks reached Spain and then Gibraltar, a journey that took a total of 15 weeks. Although Sparks was delayed and Hasler went on ahead to Britain, they both eventually made it back. The cockle shell heroes were Marines Fisher and Ellery on Cachalot, both had to abandon because of damage to their canoe. Corporal Shear and Marine Moffat on Conga, both men were drowned. Sergeant Wallace and Marine Ewart on Coalfish, both were captured and shot. Lieutenant McKinnon and Marine Conway on Cuttlefish, both men were captured and shot. Corporal Laver and Marine Mills on Crayfish, both men were captured and shot. Major Hasler and Marine Sparks on Catfish, both men made it back to the UK. The raid proved to be a morale-boosting operation that punctured a hole in Germany's perceived invincibility, and indeed led Churchill to believe that it shortened the war by six months. Admiral Lord Louis Mountbatten regarded it as the most courageous and imaginative of all raids ever carried out by the men of combined operations. Do remember to like our Facebook page, just search for the History Network on there, where you can find out about all the podcasts we produce, or pop along to the website, where you can find info about them all there as well, and you can find our store there, where you can download whole seasons of archive podcasts for just £2 each. And just a reminder that if you have any ideas for podcast subjects you'd like to hear us cover, or indeed if you'd like to have a go at writing a script for us, then just drop us a line, info at thehistorynetwork.org. And don't feel daunted about the thought of writing a script. We are here to help. So just drop us a line and we can take it from there. We would love to hear from you. Thanks again for listening. You've been listening to the historynetwork.org podcast, researched and read by Nick Barker.